Hello, welcome to today's Monday Manna. As always, we are hoping and praying that we find you in good health and in a safe place. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you today. Oh God, we bless you today. We honor you, we exalt you, we magnify you. All of the power, glory, and dominion belongs to you, Lord God. We thank you for this wonderful salvation that you have bestowed upon us through your son, through his blood, his resurrection, his atonement, his death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension to the right hand of the Father, and his high priestly office of intercession that is forever going forward on our behalf. My God, what an awesome God that you are and what a plan that you have put in place. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. We thank you that you're not done with us yet. Hallelujah. You're not done with us yet. You have many more manifestations of your spirit and your word to bestow upon us and upon those who need to believe. And we thank you for that. We give you all of the glory and the praise that is due your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen again. To God be the glory. Welcome to today's Monday Manna. We're going to continue with our series on um, the prayer of agreement. And I just want to do a couple of things, a recap of what we talked about last week, because last week was a open forum for Pastor Hutchinson to come and join us. And he touched on a few things during that time with us. And so I just want to recap on some things and then we'll move forward with the prayer of agreement. Again, um, we're working on a nine part series. This is the second part, the prayer of agreement. The first part was the prayer of faith. Amen. And so last week we talked about the prayer of agreement and using this definition that the prayer of agreement usually involves two or more people coming together, deciding to pray about anything in particular that they desire. And so it's almost, almost like having a blank check, almost like having a blank check, not quite. And we're going to talk about some of those reasons why it's not a blank check. Amen. But there is quite a bit of room and liberty that God has given us in this prayer. So let me give you this definition one more time. The prayer of agreement usually involves two or more people coming together, deciding to pray about anything in particular that they desire. And so one of our foundational scriptures is Mark 11, 22 and 23. And that is, let, let me just go there. I'm using my New Living Translation Bible today. So it may read a little different, but the, uh, the just of the matter is the same. Mark 11, 22 and 23. Um, I'm sorry, 23, 24 and 25. It says, I assure you that you can say to this mountain, May God lift you up and throw you into the sea, and your command will be obeyed. All, that, all that's required is that you really believe and do not doubt in your heart. So we talked about how that um, belief is the foundation. Amen. The Word of God is the foundation. Our belief in the Word of God is uh, another layer of our foundation, uh, walking in patience and having confidence in God. Amen. Um, all that's required is that you really believe and do not doubt in your heart. Listen to me, Jesus says. Listen to me. You can pray for anything. That's where the liberty comes in the prayer of agreement. You can pray for anything, and if you believe, you will have it. Now, there are some um, stipulations to that. And, and what I want to get through um, in this prayer of agreement, what I want to get across to you are some of those stipulations, because there are those of us who have prayed. We've made our requests known unto God. We've waited patiently. We believe that we received, and yet we didn't get it. It didn't come to pass. Amen. James talks about why some of our prayers have not come to pass. And we know that it declares, the scriptures declare, because you ask amiss to heap it upon your own lust. So selfish prayers will never get answered by God. Amen. But Jesus said, listen to me, you can pray for anything. And if you believe, you will have it. 
But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins also. That was another stipulation. You have to have a heart of forgiveness. Amen. When you pray, you have to have a heart of forgiveness. Now, believe me, because you might say, well, I'm not holding a grudge against anybody. I don't have anything against anybody. And you may not. And then again, God knows our hearts better than we know our own hearts. Amen. And so when we begin to um, take advantage of the prayer course that God has given us um, while we're here on this earth, amen, we have to also abide by the rules. We talked about with the prayer of faith, how that some rules apply to some sports, um, the rules that apply to baseball, some of them do not apply to football. Now, one rule that applies in both of those sports is you got to catch the ball. <laughs> Amen. You got to catch the ball. Now, that rule does apply. Amen. But there are so many other rules between baseball and football that do not apply with each of those sports. And the same it is with prayer. There are rules that apply to prayer that cover the whole gamut of prayer. However, there are certain parts and stipulations of prayer that don't fall in line with another prayer. And so I'm hoping that this series will clarify some things, open our eyes, open our understanding, give us that, that unction on the inside to know that we are in line with how things should go according to the kingdom of God. Amen. And so another thing that, um, Pastor Hutchinson talked about was um, how that God wants our prayer, our soul to prosper. He wants us to prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. And so I wrote down this note that prayer will prosper your soul. I want you to make that mental note and just lock it away right here in the forefront. Prayer will prosper my soul. Prayer will prosper my soul. Prayer will prosper my soul. Amen. And so because when our soul is prosperous, we will be in health and we will prosper. And that is the will of God for us. Amen. Also, um, I'm hoping and praying and asking, amen, that those of you who have been listening um, and you have a praise report that you would like to share, please, please submit it to www.opendoorministriescogic.com. I'm going to spell it. It's a long one www.opendoorministriescogic.com. Please submit your praise report of the good things that God has done um, in your life, whether individually or corporately in your family, so that we can share it with our listening, our listening audience, with our viewing audience, that they too will turn to the living God, amen, and have results in their lives. In this time that we live in, it's always been since the beginning of time, but there are ebbs and flows of things that happen um, on the earth and among the people, the inhabitants of the earth. Amen. And sometimes times are more of a challenge than other times. This is one of those challenging times. And so let us together increase the hearts of others to turn to the living God that we serve. Amen. Amen. So moving on in the um, prayer of agreement today, I wanted to use another example. Last week we talked about um, prayer partners and we also talked about and gave an example of who not to have as a prayer partner. Um, we have to be careful who we link ourselves to, a amen, in order to get the results that we're looking for. So last week we talked about Ananias and Sapphira, which is always a great example of um, telling the truth when you have opportunity, amen, and um, who to agree with in certain situations. Now, there there have been times, honestly, when um, my husband had a, uh, a thought in his heart or he had a desire, um, and so he shared it with me, and I didn't quite agree with what what he was saying or how he was looking at the situation, but out of obedience to obey him, um, my final word on that was, I don't agree with what you are saying or doing. However, however, 
out of obedience, I will do it. Now that has happened few and far between in all these years that, that we have been married. That is not the constant in our relationship. Amen. But there are certain times and, and Sapphira is a great example to us as wives. Sometimes, you know, when it comes to lying to the Holy Ghost, sister, girlfriend, you might have to stand your ground and say, that's not the will of God. That is not the will of God. Amen. And Hopefully, you know, either he'll agree with you or you'll just have to take a stand by yourself. I'm not saying wives should be disobedient to their husbands. Do not read that into what I'm saying. But if you read Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 1, you'll understand what I'm saying. Savira had an opportunity when Peter confronted her. She had an opportunity to tell the truth, and she did not tell the truth. And it cost her her very life. Amen. You'll understand it when you read it. Let the Lord give you understanding. Amen. All right. So with the prayer of agreement, we have to be mindful and careful about who we're agreeing with. And I'm going to uh, give us another example today um, of that same, um, that same mindset about being careful who you are in agreement with. It could cost you everything. Hear me when I say this. It can cost you everything. It is important to be careful about who you agree with. Let's look at this example here. The Bible says that these things are written as an example unto us. So let's 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 look at this example. Amen. In 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22 and then we're going to go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 20. Let me just write this down so I don't forget. Second Chronicles 20, 31 through 37. 31 through 37. And here goes my phone ringing. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Second. So we're going to go there. Go with me to 1 Kings 22, 47 through 49. Keep in mind that there are people that I should agree with and there are people that I should not agree with when it comes to the prayer of agreement. Let's read. 1 Kings 22, 47. It says, There was no king in Edom at that time, only a deputy. I'm going to start back at 41. It's a lot of reading, but we have a few minutes. Amen. First Kings 22, 41. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa. Asa was king. Asa passed away. Jehoshaphat began to rule in his stead. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, began to rule over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab's reign in Israel. Excuse me. He was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. That's a long time. Amen. His mother was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhai. Jehoshaphat was a good king, good king, following the example of his father. Asa, following the example of his father Asa, he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, however, he failed to remove all the pagan shrines and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. The king of Israel was King Ahab at this time. King Ahab was a wicked king, but Jehoshaphat, who is now the king over Judah, made peace or an agreement with the king of Israel. He made a peace treaty with him. The rest of the events in Jehoshaphat's reign, the extent of his power, and the wars he waged, the wars he waged are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. He banished from the land the rest of the shrine prostitutes who still continued their practices from the days of his father Asa. There was no king in Edom at that time, only a deputy. Jehoshaphat also built a fleet of trading ships to sail to Ophir, for gold. He built these ships that they may take them to Ophir, which was plenteous in gold, and reap the harvest of the gold that was in Ophir. That was the plan for these ships. But the ships never set sail, for they were wrecked at Ezion Geber. At that time, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, 
At that time, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, proposed to Jehoshaphat. He proposed to Jehoshaphat, hey, I have a plan. Let my men sail an expedition with your men. But Jehoshaphat refused the offer. When Jehoshaphat died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Jehoram became the next king. So Jehoshaphat is the king over uh, Judah. He has made a peace treaty with the king of Israel, who is Ahab at this time, who is a wicked king. And he made an agreement with him that we're going to build these ships. And when we build these ships, we're going to sail over to the land of, uh, of Ophir. And we're going to get that gold that is in the land of Ophir. That was the plan. That was the plan. But the ships never set sail. Now, let's go to Second Chronicles 20. And we're going to talk about why these ships never set sail. While the, why this agreement, although God allowed them to come together and agree, he wasn't in the midst of their agreement and he didn't allow their plan to come to pass. It is very important. Who